All right, so this series of videos is going to be covering, uh, once again, kinematics. However, uh, these videos are going to be covering mostly in two dimensions and occasionally in three dimensions how things move and whatnot. So in the last few videos we did one-dimensional kinematics, basically where acceleration or velocity was only acting along one single line. In this case we're going to be doing stuff that you know acts on a plane or completely in three space. So just to begin uh, with our basically our coordinate system, uh, any point in two space can be described by a vector, we'll call it R, coming from the origin going out to that point. So in this case you have point P out here being described by the vector R coming from the origin with components X and Y. And so naturally you can write that vector R as X times the X unit vector I plus y times the j unit vector uh, j. Similarly, just as you could uh, take your position and derive it to get a velocity and derive again to get acceleration in one dimension, you can do the same thing with vectors in two dimensions. So if you derive this r with respect to time, you get a derivative with respect to x and a derivative with respect to y. Uh, as equations for motion in two dimensions. So dr dt is the same as a velocity vector, which you can write as its x component and y component, vx and vy. And you can go down the list and continue derive once again to get, you know, acceleration acting in its two respective directions as well. And so from here, you can sort of take this two-dimensional vector and break it down into uh, two one-dimensional components. So if we look at velocity, for example, bring that down here, we can really say that uh, there's a velocity x component, a velocity x vector, which is just the change in x position of this point P with respect to time, say it's you know following some path or what have you. As it moves along, it's going to naturally change its x direction as it goes. And so you can write this component of velocity as the change in x. Likewise, you can take the change in y with respect to time as it moves, and uh, that is simply, you know, just the change in y with respect to time from this position vector. So this vector will come out along the path the whole way. And this vector is changing its components as it moves along this path. And that change in components is captured in these two vx and vy measurements. Okay, that's great and all, but if you have a velocity vector broken up into two components vx and vy, you may not actually care about the individual components, and that's all you really get from the velocity vector. You want to know how fast it's actually mo moving. You want to know the speed. And because we know from previous uh, definitions of vectors that uh, the magnitude of a vector gives essentially its length, so too will the magnitude of a velocity vector give its speed. And how do you find the magnitude? Because this is a right triangle, all you have to do is the Pythagorean theorem. So, to find speed, all you have to do is take the root of vx squared plus vy squared due to the shape of uh, this velocity vector and its components as right triangles. Now because we're dealing with two dimensions and must necessarily have vectors, uh, you may think that we need all new equations, but the simple fact is what you can do is because things like velocity break up into uh, respective parts as do acceleration and position, you can examine these individual parts, the constituent uh, factors within the vectors individually. So for example, if we want to plot uh, r, which is x times i plus y times i, we can do that given that they have a constant acceleration, we can still use our constant acceleration equations. All you have to do is just uh, basically do the equation twice, once for each dimension. So here we have the standard x equation, but you'll note we have a v0x, so this is all, this takes into account the velocity in the x direction, as well as any 
acceleration in the x direction, whereas uh, this equation for y, which follows the same format, but just acts in a different dimension. So in this case, the equation for y using constant acceleration will take into account the initial y direction as well as any acceleration in the y direction. And you can see that these two don't interfere with one another. In other words, the two sections of the vector act completely independently, and as long as the acceleration is constant, we can use our constant acceleration equations to describe motion in either dimension. However, you don't always necessarily want to break up each individual constituent vector into its two parts. So, you can obviously take the two components of velocity at a given point, and you know, you have a certain x velocity and a certain y velocity. However, when you combine them to get the actual velocity vector at that point, the velocity vector itself, which combines both vx and vy, is actually what's going to give you uh, the speed as well as the direction of the particle. So in other words, if you want to know the actual geometric interpretation of the math you're doing, you know, the speed, direction, uh, what have you, of what you're looking at, you have to combine these two parts. You can work on them independently, but when you want to know the final speed or what have you, speed, direction, you know, this angle from the x-axis, etc., you have to actually recombine them to get the velocity vector. Now the last sort of concept we're going to be discussing in this video has to do with displacement, which we talked about in the last video, but once again this is in two dimensions, as well as average velocity, which has to do with displacement, but in this case will be a vector instead of just, you know, some magnitude value. So, uh, as a quick introduction, the displacement vector basically points from your point of origin, in this case represented by P0, to your final destination, the point final, as we have it written here. And the displacement vector doesn't change uh, regardless of what path you take to get there. So you can take, you know, either one of these two, which are equally valid, or this one as well, anything really, to go from point A to point B. If you go, if you have the same start and end points, you'll have the same displacement vector. And as we learned in the last video, uh, in one-dimensional kinematics, where you weren't using vectors, uh, we learned that uh, basically total velocity, or actually average velocity, is the change in x, which was the displacement, over the change in time. So basically, how far you went in total over how long it took you. And the same thing follows for average velocity in vector format, in two dimensions. In this case, we use delta r, which is also a vector. You'll notice there's an arrowhead on this pointing from the initial point to the final point over the total time it takes you. So, this ratio of delta r over delta time will give you this v average equation. And this will always point in the same direction as the displacement. Now in the next video we're going to be looking at a more general two-dimensional kinematics equations including equations of motion in two, two and three dimensions as well as uh, project, projectile motions and special cases.